By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are back in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands, for the Often Troll Cup. This is the fifth edition of that cup, and we've reached round number two. And in round number two, we have robots. It's a blue and white robots piloted by Philco, taking on Beast Island by Richard. So that means that he wants to show us a lot of flips. And both of these players are playing pretty artifact-heavy decks. So this could be an interesting matchup. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I would just like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip the deck decks, check them out after the match. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Please consider becoming a patron of the show if you uh, want to support the channel. So if you like the content that I make, please consider becoming a sponsor of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck deck of Philco Robots. Let's have a look. And here we see the blue-white version of Robots, right? So... A lot of times you see these decks with a black splash as well for Animate Dead, but this deck is really probably going for more for the consistency, choosing to just keep it on two colors. And I kind of get that. I personally really like two color decks. I think it has something to do with the fact that I started collecting duels and started in revised. And for me, every duel always opened up a new color combination. So I usually play two colors and I can really see that coming back here, of course. Uh, when we're looking at the deck, it's pretty clear, I think, what Robots wants to do, to do, right? So they just want to kind of ramp up, you know, play out your bots as quickly as you can. The Moxen are here. We've got the Soul Rings. Sometimes these decks are also played with Basalt Monoliths or Mana Volts. We don't see them in here. Um, and basically, because you're ramping up with the Moxen and the Soul Ring, then hopefully you can play your Suchi early. You can play your uh, Triskelion early, and then you can start copying them with Copy Artifact. And especially when you start copying your trikes it can get out of hand really quickly so trike is a creature for six from antiquities it's just a one one for six which sounds really bad but it comes into play with three plus one plus one counters so it is a four four and you can take those counters off to deal one damage to any target and that makes it so good right if you can start copying them early in the game and you've got like let's say three trikes on board and you can swing in with them deal 12 damage but also you can take all the counters off and deal an extra nine damage after that combat step. So when you're playing against a trike heavy deck, you always have to kind of minus your life total with the amount of trikes or counters that are there on the board, right? So that's that's important. I remember matches where I was on like, I thought I was on a safe 15 life, passed the turn to my robot opponent. And before I knew it, he started copying left, right and center. And then he got an extra turn with that blue power to time walk. And I was dead, you know, kind of basically out of nowhere. So that can really happen with this deck. And what makes it so good because you're combining it with white is you have those white answers. You've got your, your swords, you've got your disenchant, you've got your balance. So you've got your weapons to kind of, you know, stable the game uh, early on, get into that mid game where you start casting your trikes and you start copying your trikes doing what you want. We also see two GM day tomes in the deck and of course four counter spells. So it's really kind of a control game here as well. And it, it's looking like a very stable deck. I think if I would build blue white robots, it probably would kind of look like this. Maybe I would add some Thalwar Stones, maybe Mana Volts. I would have to test it again. Um, it's always hard to make space for cards, though, in a deck like this, because there are just so many good slots. I mean, who can argue playing with Disenchant's Counterspells and Swords? It just makes sense. You know, they're they're perfect weapons. And of course, you're going to, you know, play the, play the Power Cards and the Brain Geysers and the Mana Drains. And, you know, the deck kind of builds itself from that point. Um, but yeah, a card that I really like usually in these decks is Sage of Latinam because it's so nice to tap your Sage second artifact that's basically useless and get a card for it in return or in response to artifact removal from your op uh, opponent, use that Sage to get a card. But I guess it's really tough to to make space for the Sage of Latinam. I mean, what would you take out to put like, let's say two Sages in here? I think that's a pretty difficult question. Uh, to be honest, this, this list just looks really solid. I really like the Hercules Recall, by the way, in the sideboard. I think that could be quite useful in this matchup as well because the opponent, Richard, is also playing an artifact heavy deck. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of Richard Beast Island. And here we see the deck of Richard. So this is called Beast Island, named after Guardian Beast and, of course, the blue section of the deck, which is very relevant, so hence Island. Um, Guardian Beast, one black and three for a 2-4, which are great stats. And 
Guardian Beast is just an insane creature, right? I mean, a 2-4, just like a giant spider, but the ability is much, much better than giant spiders because when you have this in play and it's untapped, uh, your artifacts cannot be destroyed or enchanted, right? So you cannot even play a steel artifact on these uh, artifacts, which is pretty cool. The trick, of course, is to get that Guardian Beast to tap down because then the artifacts are vulnerable. And what Beast Island basically wants to do is get Chaos Orb on board because with Guardian Beast and Chaos Orb, you can endlessly flip the Chaos Orb. Now, do remember after flipping, it's destroyed, but it's indestructible because of Guardian Beast. It does come back into play tapped. So you have to wait another turn before you can flip again, but still extremely powerful. Now, the only but in this deck is, of course, you only have one Chaos Orb, so you have to try to find it as soon as you can. That's, of course, why we see Wheel of Fortune in the deck. That's why we see Time Twister in the deck. That's why we have Demonic Tutor in the deck. So there are a lot of ways of tutoring it up. We also have a lot of Sages of Latinam. I already briefly discussed the Sage and how I feel about the card. I think it's really, really good. Um, we didn't see it in the deck of Filco. We do see it in this deck. It makes more sense in this deck as well, I have to say, because you quickly want to go through your deck to find that Chaos Orb, and also you're playing with Mana Vault. So sack the Vault, and then you get, you know, one card closer to that Chaos Orb that you want to find. Um, and looking at the rest of the deck, by the, way, by the way, we see four Icy Manipulators. I mean, this is Uber Control. I think we could be in for a long game. I think what um, what Richard wants to do is kind of tap everything down with Ices until he can have his uh, Guardian Beast and Chaos Orb combo on, on board. And yeah, and, and, and remember the deck of, of Filco, right? Filco is also playing with copy artifacts and all that stuff. So we could sit here for a long time watching two players tap each other's permanents all the time on end step with like a zillion Icy, uh, icy Manipulators. Icy is one of these cards that I really enjoy playing with myself. But I really don't like playing against it. And I also really don't like it when my opponent copies my, my uh, IC Manipulator. Because it just gives me a headache. I know what to do. I've done it before. But every single time it gives me a headache. Because I have to think when to use it. When to tap the IC down of my opponent. Or when to do something else with it. Anyway, that's just my two cents. You know, that's just my two cents. I'm one of those horrible people that loves to play with a card. But I don't want others to play with it. Un unfortunately or fortunately, magic doesn't, doesn't work that way. Anyway, Beast Island versus Robots. We talked about both the decks. That means we're ready. Let's go to round number two of the Upton Troll Cup number five. Game number one, here we go. On the left, we have the white blue robots player, Filco. On the right, the beast island player, so Guardian Beast, Chaos Orb, that's a D shard. This is his hand, so we see Mox Sapphire, we see Sage of Latinam. Is that a copy artifact there? We see some duels. This is the hand of Filco. There is a, also a duel land there in hand. Is that a Mox? Yes, it is a Mox Ruby, tapping both, copying the Ruby. Wow, lots of action here in turn one for Filco. Pretty good. If he can find a land next turn, he can deploy that Suchi. Ooh, look at this. Black Lotus. Mox Sapphire. Tundra. What else are we going to see here? Is he going to empty his entire hand? Tapping the Sapphire Soul Ring. Does he have a Time Twister? That would be insane. Tapping. Okay, Sage of Latinam. That's not a Time Twister. Still a very good opener. Do remember, though, that Richard now only has three cards left in hand, I believe. So he's got a lot of mana, but he's also kind of out of fuel. Let's see what Filco can do. It looks like he hasn't found another land. It's uh, unfortunate for him. Really wants to deploy those Suchis. But there's some blue power time walks. So he's going to take an extra turn. He's going to untap, going to draw for turn. There is a workshop in hand. That's good. With that workshop, he can deploy the Suchi. Two Suchis in hand, by the way. And that is number one hitting the board. Is he going to sort this Sage of Latinam? I would really consider doing it. The Sage is this card you underestimate, but as the game progresses, you, you're going to see how powerful that Sage actually is. Maybe Fulco a little bit in the tank here, trying to think what to do, deciding not to plow that Sage. I mean, maybe that's a good decision. Time will tell. There's another Tundra. It's going to tap. It's going to play a Mana Volt. Is he going to use that Volt? That's the question. Going to tap three. Only two more cards in hand for Richard. There's a copy artifact. going to copy the Suchi. And now it's, of course, nice for Filco that he has that Swords left for the Suchi. I wonder what that other white card is. Perhaps a Disenchant. That would be really nice. Tapping one more. Oh, Disenchanting the Suchi. In response, he's going to Disenchant 
the copy but now of course look at it Richard already getting value from the sage drawing a card back from that disenchant and this is exactly what sage wants to do providing some card advantage but both players really low on resources right oh is that a brain geyser oh that is great unfortunately he doesn't have enough mana to use it effectively there's the Suchi. And can you imagine if Fulka now would have had a Sage, he could have sacked the Sage next turn, uh, or could have sacked the Suchi to the Sage, I mean, get four extra mana from that, and of course a card, and then he can fuel his Brain Geyser. Anyway, here we see another Mana Vault, so he's going to sack the Vault, going to use the old Vault to cast a new one and draw an extra card. What are we going to see? There's an Icy Manipulator. So we can use that Icy to tap down the Suchi. It looks like he's going to sack the Lotus. So he's got five mana in the pool. Ooh, there is a Guardian Beast. Quick sorts to Plowshares on that Guardian Beast. That means two more life here for Richard. So he's going to go up to 22. And one card left in hand for Filco. But I mean, this is quite an intense game. I mean, both players doing a lot here, having a lot of answers and a lot of threats. Brain guys are still in hand. What's that other card that he drew? I mean, is he considering a brain geyser for one that would be kind of... I think I would keep it in hand. Okay, tapping, six. Okay, that's a decent draw, Trike. That is really good, Triskelion. So now it's a 4-4. Four, four. Again, he could consider killing the Sage. But choosing not to. One card in hand here for Richard. Gonna tap the Sapphire. Having a blue in the pool, gonna sack it. To the Sage, changing his mind though. I wonder what that one card in hand is. Okay, just a city. Not that impressive. And actually deciding to just keep the Sapphire tapped. I guess he tapped it already, but deciding not to sack it to the Sage. So I wonder maybe... They're tapping three from the vault, second the vault. Gonna draw a card here. And now he's gonna kill it. I think it's a good decision. Better better late than never, Filco, really. I mean, this is such an engine card for, uh, for Richard. I mean, he's already drew quite a lot of cards off of his Sage, also because he, he got so many mana resources, of course, early on, Artifact Rocks, I mean early on in the game so I think it's a really good decision to just kill it now and and end it and it's a bit unfortunate here for Filco that he just cannot find more lands to fuel or more Moxen uh, to fuel his Brain Geyser at least he's got some damage now he wants to attack he's gonna tap down the Suchi so deal two with the trike get him back on 20 okay there's a man land that's pretty good to factory can start swinging in with that as well. And I think if you're Richard, you really want to find one of those draw sevens. Two cards in hand, flicking the cards there. I wonder what two cards that are. What cards do you have? That is the big question. We simply don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We do know the one card in hand for Philco is a Brain Geyser. Tapping two. There's a balance. Ay, 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 ay. That is so good. That is so good. And one of the things that makes balance so good in artifact heavy deck is it doesn't count the artifacts. Yes, it counts the artifact creatures, but not the artifact. So, I mean, the IC, the Mox, and it all doesn't count that stuff. One card in hand for, uh, for both players. And one more damage, of course, from the tri counter to Richard. So, he uh, dropped to 19. Yeah. 
I mean, this is still pretty much everybody's game, really. And this this try this uh, balance really came at a at a good time. Look at that tapping down to workshop. So saying, you know what, I can take two points of damage. And this island is actually a big deal. Are we going to see a brain geyser for three? Brain geyser for three. I mean, that is decent, you know. It's an ancestral recall. There's nothing wrong with that. Three cards in hand now for Philco. Maybe this brain geyser is going to be the big change. Remember, he's playing with a lot of disenchants in the deck. Copy artifacts. I mean, this is not a great matchup for, for Richard from that uh, point of view. Ooh, what is he going to do? He's going to tap four. Oh, my twist for four. You dirty dog. Oh, 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 oh. the perfect answer to that brain geyser. And just when I thought that, you know, maybe Philco is going to uh, kind of take over the match here, we saw that uh, tap down or that, uh, that mind twist. Wow. That was the right card at the right time for Richard. Okay, there's a gem day tome. That could work. I mean, Tome has made the difference plenty of games. Card advantage is a big deal. So a new threat on the board. Even though it doesn't attack life totals, it's a problem for Richard. Flicking through his cards again, another City of Brass, one card in hand. Passing the turn, untap, upkeep, draw is going to tap the man land. Now in response, of course, Filco could use it, draw out a land. Use it to activate his gem de tome. And that's exactly what he does. And I think that's a good decision. Just draw that extra card. Now draw a card for turn. Exactly two cards in hand now for Philco. At least he doesn't have to worry anymore about the mind twist. That's something. And also the balance is gone. So no more ways for these shards to kind of uh, force Philco to discard. One card in hand passing the turn. Very exciting game one, very controlling from Richard's side and we see Philco constantly trying to put a threat on the board. Passing the turn again, again tapping down the Mishra's factory. Is Philco again going to use it to draw a card? That's the question. Nope. So does that mean that he's got a good option in hand? I wonder. Could also choose to just attack for the two damage. Put Richard here on 16. Two cards in hand now for Philco. Passing the turn. Okay, interesting. So now on end step, he's got enough mana to activate the Jam Dayton. But first, let's see what Richard can do. Tapping four. Are we going to see another Guardian Beast? Yep, Guardian Beast, two, four creature, Arabian Nights. Remember, as long as it's untapped, all the artifacts of Richard are indestructible. So if he can now find his Chaos Orb, it's problem time for Philco. And Philco, of course, probably checking a few things, asking about the Guardian Beast. Better be safe than sorry. Tapping. Okay, we're going to see a disenchant. So in response to the cast of Guardian Beast, he's going to disenchant the IC Manipulator. That makes sense because before the Guardian Beast hits the board, it's still, uh, it's, it can still be destroyed. It's not indestructible yet. There we see the tap down here of the Gem de Tome. Not enough mana for Philco to use it anymore. Now he's going to untap and a draw for turn. I mean, the 2-4 is also a great blocker for the Mishra's factories. Is he considering attacking with them? He's got a disenchant in hand, it seems. What's that other card? It's hard to see that other card in his hand. I mean, it's not so bad for Philco kind of having this standstill because he's got the Gem de Tome, so he can just draw extra cards. The only problem, of course, is what he has to fear is, is if Richard finds a Chaos Orb, he's in serious trouble. But then again, I mean, if he finds a Swords by drawing extra cards, I mean, he can just sort the, the Guardian Beast and start swinging in with the factories. 
passing to turn. I really wonder what that other card is in the hand of Filco. Two cards again for Richard. Another City of Brass. Yeah, that's not great for him. Passing to turn. So on end step, drawing a card. That's what you want to do in life. Drawing a card for turn. Finding a Tundra. Number two, number three in hand. I think if, if I was Filco and... I just have a Tundra Disenchant and let's say, I don't know, another land in hand or something. I would just pass the turn here and, and keep drawing extra cards. I mean, you're drawing two cards a turn. Your opponent's only drawing one card a turn. So eventually that should give you the upper hand. Now, of course, Richard has a, a lot of, or a lot, but he's got two draw sevens in the deck and a Demonic Tutor. So he's going to decide to draw in uh, in his main, finding a counter spell, which is which is really good. You know, if he finds the Chaos Orb, he can just counter it away. If he if he plays the uh, demonic, he could consider countering it. Tapping city, tapping three. There's a wheel. Ooh, this is interesting. Exactly, I think a counter spell is good here. I mean, you don't want to get him seven cards closer to that Chaos Orb. One card in hand for Richard, passing the turn. And I mean, this is great for Filco. He got to draw an extra card and counter away a spell. That's good business. It's going to be tough for Richard here to, to find a win. There we see the Trike. Interesting card, right? He can play it out, use his workshop for this. So he still has three mana untapped. Well, five actually. One of the things he could consider doing here is animating one of the factories, attacking with the factory. If he blocks, which I don't think he's gonna, he can kill the uh, the Guardian Beast, but it looks like he already passed uh, the turn back to Richard. I think I would have attacked here. It does mean that you can no longer draw an extra card though with the Gem Dayton, but yeah, I would have just tried to put some extra pressure here on the life of Richard next turn. Of course, he can start swinging in with the Trike. Gonna tap the City of Brass. It's gonna tap four, it seems. Fireball. Okay, Fireball here on the Triskelion. That is good, and of course he can still deal three points of damage. It is a two four, so he cannot kill the Guardian Beast. Best option for him is probably to just deal three points of damage exactly to Richard. Put him on 13. Draw an extra uh, card at the end, of course, with the Gem de Tome. It looks like he's got another Gem de Tome in hand there. Could that be another one? Oh yeah, before untapping, I would take a moment. Okay, Library of Alexandria there. Oh man, that's tough. The last card in hand for Richard was that Library of Alexandria. Man, man, that's not the last card you want to have in your hand. I mean, the best draw for Richard here would be a Time Twister, I guess. Refill his hand or Chaos Orb. Start removing the uh, the real estate, I guess, of Philco. But then again, I mean, even if you find your Chaos Orb now, we do see a Swords to Plowshares in hand. Exactly, Swords there. And it's so nice for Filk to play against an opponent with no cards in hand. Attacking here. Going to put him on 11. Also mana drain in hand. Yeah, this is full control by Filko. This is going to be really, really tough for Richard. He needs a miracle to get out of this pickle. I mean, Wheel of Fortune's in the bin. Mind, uh, mind Twist's in the bin. Balance, although it wouldn't help him much here, is also in the bin. Well, I guess balance would help him here. It would just uh, take care of the entire hand of Filco. But yeah, that mana drain in the hand of Filco. Another Mishra's factory here found. So he can now swing in for five. If he used the factory to pump, exactly. Yeah, six. It's going to be over very soon. Now, do remember, it's just game one, though. So everything can still happen after this game. Both players are going to sideboard. It's always a best of three here. Round number two at the Often Troll Cup. Number five. Ooh, he's going for his graveyard. Did he find maybe a regrowth? He could regrowth. Going to take a damage. Going to go to five. 
Regrowth. Okay, he's going to mana drain already. He's not even going to wait. And that's it. Richard extending the hand, but it's only game one. Remember, this is just game one. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards, and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Philco sitting on the left, winning his first game. That means Richard is on the play here for game number two. We see some copy artifacts there in the hand of Richard, sorting his cards out. And I assume he's chosen to be on the play. There he goes. There's a City of Brass. And that's it. So a very modest opener, especially when you compare it to that opening. Oh, look at Philco go, though. Look at him go. Two Moxen and a Tundra. And oh, he also has an Ancestral Recall in hand. That is sick. I assume he's copying the Sapphire. Exactly putting it under there. And now he can cast the Ancestral Recall to refill his hand. That is insane. Or does he have a counter spell? Does he want to keep his two blue open for a counter spell or pretend to have a counter spell? Ooh, there we do see a red Elemental Blast though. But now it's already spent. So that gives an opening to Folco. I would now really slam that Ancestral Recall down, but he doesn't. I would play it so bad because he was tapped out. He doesn't have any access to his Red Elemental Blast. I mean, I, I, I stupidly enough cast an Ancestral Recall into a Red Elemental Blast not too long ago. Completely for some reason forgetting that we were in, not in Game 1 but in Game 2 and he sideboarded already. I mean, you're going to regret it if you later on cast an Ancestral and it's going to be countered. Anyway, let's see what Richard can do. There's an underground sea there next to his city of brass. Tapping, gonna take a damage, drop to 18. There's a disenchant. Yeah, this is great timing again because now Richard is tapped out and he can still use the mana from the Mox Sapphire. So this is also good timing, of course. It's even better. And Richard being tapped out, passing the turn. So Philco here drawing for turn, finding a divine offering, it seems. I mean, he's got lands in hand there, right? For a moment, I thought he passed, but I couldn't imagine because there's still tons of options here in his hand. Playing out a land for starters. I believe he also has a Swords to Plowshares in hand, a divine offering. So he can just sit back and wait, try to build up his mana base again. That looks like a counter spell there, by the way. Which would be really nice for Philco having a counter spell, a divine offering, and a swords in hand. I mean, that's luxury. There's a man land, Mishra's Factory hitting the board. Tapping two here. What are we gonna see for two? Of course, the Sage, Sage of Latinam. And now there's a quick sword to plowshares, of course, after Seeing how good that card was in game number one, I think this is a very wise decision. Get rid of the Sage. But I do recognize it. I mean, the first time I played against Sage, I also didn't destroy it straight away. It took me a while to, re to realize how good it was. Anyway, there we see City. Now he's going to take two damage, though. Tapping four. Are we going to see an Icy? There's the Icy Manipulator. Are we going to see a Counter Spell on the Icy? Or a Divine Offering would be quite nice. That means four life. For Philco, wow, this is really good. It's looking so good for Philco. I mean, he just has all the answers. He had that Ancestral Recall. This is looking tough for Richard here. And again, he stepped out, meaning it's kind of a free, a free moment here for Philco. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't really have anything to do. He's got the Counterspell in hand, two Triskelions, it seems, and an Island. Next turn, he can start casting his Trikes. Does have to tap out completely though. There's the pass. No land drop from Richard. There's a Mox Ruby. Tapping the Mox it seems. Nope, untapping again. Hasn't played a land for turn as well. So you could also consider playing out the basic island. And I, I, can, I can understand Philco here. I mean, does he really want to tap out? Maybe run into a counter spell. Just passing the turn, not even playing the land drop for turn. 
Maybe, yeah, there's the land. I wonder, is he gonna tap out, try to play the... Who Tapping four, are we gonna see a Suchi? Okay, there's a Suchi. So he found a Suchi from the top, I guess. Playing out that Suchi. Tapping two, copy artifact. Of course, we're gonna see a counter spell here, countering the copy. Are we gonna see, ooh, Ancestral Recall, yeah, that's really good. Still, I can understand the counter on the copy artifact. But great timing again. I think what both players are doing really well is timing that Ancestral Recall very, very well. I mean, you want to make sure that it cannot be countered. Mox Sapphire here for Richard now. And again, it's a very intense game here, game number two. And Richard is kind of back into it with this uh, Ancestral Recall. Okay, there is a Relic Barrier. So you can tap it to tap down target artifact, a card from Legends. Yeah, this is really annoying for Philco. Ooh, is that a copy artifact? That is pretty sweet. Now the question is, what would you copy? I mean, you could also consider copying the Relic Barrier. I mean, Suchi is also an obvious choice, of course. You could even consider copying the factory. So it's copying the Suchi. Gonna animate the factory. Now he wants to go into combat. It's gonna tap down the Suchi, take two here. Gonna drop the 13, passing the turn. And that trike is still there in hand for Philco, waiting for the right moment to play it out. There's a copy artifact. I mean, those copy artifacts are so decisive in this match. Both players playing with a full four. Another copy, wow. And now all of a sudden your, your opponent has two trikes, or sorry, two Suchis. I guess the good news for Philco is that he didn't play out the Triskelion yet. You don't want to have to give your opponent trikes. It's much better that they just have that 4-4 four, four Suchi. And now he's got enough mana to also keep two blue open. I mean, is that last card in his hand, is that then a counter spell? I can't really see. I'm talking about the last card in hand of Philco. Three cards in hand for Richard, so he's got that card advantage. It looks like it's another trike, though. I mean, I would consider just attacking now. I mean, Richard's on the lower life total. He has more cards than you, so you want to put pressure on, I guess? I would say I want to go into combat. He's going to tap down one of your Suchis. Just attack with the other, do a trade. But he's passing the turn, though, and then he's going to tap one of the Suchis. I mean, that makes sense as well. It's not like attacking is so much better, but I don't know. It kind of feels to me that it's better to kind of be aggressive right now. It feels like Richard is more of the control player in this match. There's a disenchant. He's going to drop then to nine, taking the three points of damage here. And Richard in the tank now. Tapping the city, so he's gonna drop to eight. Untapping again. Gonna attack with a four four. Looks like they're gonna trade. And then second main, gonna tap a city, gonna drop to eight. Tap the factory, there's a regrowth. Oh, that's good. Ancestral recall probably, right? Playing the recall, ay, 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 ay. This is slipping out of the hands here of Philco. Three more cards for Richard. Great magic, finding Black Lotus. Can he do something with it though? Passing the turn. So, mainly found mana sources there with that Ancestral Recall. I'm expecting Filka here to play his second Triskelion, or did he find a Suchi from the top? I mean, Brain Geyser would be really good here. Yep, there's a Suchi. Are we going to see any counter magic? Passing to turn. 
There we're going to see the Relic Barrier tapping down the Suchi. So even though Richard is only on 8, I mean, it feels like he's doing quite well. He's got to be a little bit careful, though, with those City of Brasses. Oh, Divine Offering, that's going to help. So he's going to go down to 4, but remember, he's going to gain 6 life from the Divine Offering. Divine Offering is so good. One of the things Filco could have done here that would have been better is deal 2 damage here to Richard and then 1 damage to his own trike so that Richard would not get the uh, the 6 life. I think it wouldn't have mattered that much because it, look, it looks like with this control magic Richard is really trampling over. Pretty cool land there. I think there's a windmill on there. An altar there of the planes, a windmill and a... The Dutch flag or the French flag, depends on how you look at it. But we're here in the Netherlands, so I assume it's the Dutch one. Attacking for four. Or for eight, actually. He's on 12. Ugh, things are turning sour very quickly now for Filco. Balance would really help him here. Would destroy at least the two creatures. Or a Brain Geyser. He needs like one of the power cards to get out of this. Okay, there's a Balance. That is really good. This Balance is going to destroy both Suchis. Does the T-shirt have a counter spell? No, he doesn't. Okay, Suchis are out of here. They're going to count their lands. So we've got four, five, six lands on the side of Filco and only five lands on the side of Richard. So he has to exactly put a land away. But that doesn't really matter that much. And there's the pass to Richard. So two cards in hand for him, finding another City of Brass. One card left. And we're back in top decking mode. I mean, I'm liking this, this match a lot. I mean, these two decks, it's so 50-50. 12 life for Filco, 9 life for Richard. There's a strip mine. I guess in, on this, gonna go for the underground sea. I guess it kind of makes sense because you just want to force Richard to use his city of brasses here. Ooh, this Sage of Latinum is really good on this board. He can start sacking his Moxin for some extra cards. Tapping four. There's a Gem de Tome. Again, a really good card as well on this board. So both players kind of playing their draw engines out, gonna draw some extra cards. Only one card in hand for Filco and one card in hand for Richard. It's gonna use it main. Is that another gem they told him there? Passing the turn here to Richard. Richard tapping the emerald. Then gonna sack it with one green mana floating. That is the trick, right? There's a disenchant on the book. Ah, that is unfortunate for Filco. Good for Richard though. Richard dropping to eight. Gonna attack for two. Filco now on 10. Another factory. Could have considered playing the factory first and he could have still pumped it, dealing an extra point of damage. He would have been on nine. Maybe he had his reasons not to. I don't know. Tapping four. Icy Manipulator. Ooh, very cool altar, by the way. Looks like there's some ice on the back of that icy. And Filco passing the turn. Okay, there we go. The shirt untapping. I mean, he could start, of course, the shirt uses Relic Barrier to tap down the icy. In response, I think Filco could have tapped down a City of Brass. And here we see Richard really taking full advantage of that Sage. Again, doing that trick, tapping the Mox for a mana floating, sacking it, drawing a card. Using it now, I guess, to animate the factory perhaps or not. Is he attacking with it? He can pump it with the other one. Going to take three. Exactly. Going to go down to seven. Oh, there's another Mox. I think this Sage is really going to be a game changer. It already has. It's just going to give... Richard, the cards he needs. There's a Chaos Orb. 
Now remember, Richard also has a Chaos Orb, so upon activation of the Orb, Richard can respond by activating his Chaos Orb. So he's now going to activate the Chaos Orb. What is he going to do? Does he want to protect the Sage? I think he does, right? Exactly. Going to use his Chaos Orb. Let's see if he hits. Yep, it's a hit. So the Chaos Orb's going to go. And this is a very common practice in old school where you use your own card as a target so that if you damage it, then it's your own card that you damage. I personally like to really just get the card that I'm flipping on, but that's just me. Floating a black, again, doing the same trick. So all three mocks have now given uh, Richard a card. And it's really nice to see in this match the power of Sage of Latinum, how good it can be. Again, the attack, no block here from Philco, so he's going to drop to four. I mean, at a certain point in the game, he will be forced to block. The problem, of course, is also that Relic Barrier on the side of Richard. Animating. He's going to tap it down. Okay, this is a good move because now Philco still has his Icy. And with the Icy, at least he can tap down one of the two. So there's a Relic on the Icy. In response, the Icy is going to tap down one of the factories, but now in response, he can, of course, use that mana to exactly pump the other one and still attack for three. No, he's going to attack for four. I guess he tapped something else with the Icy. I mean, even if he would have tapped down the the uh, Mishra's factory, he would have taken three damage, go down to one. He could have also attacked with the Sage, by the way, so he would have died either way. Game number two, Richard winning. I mean, these are really nice intense matches i like it and it's 1-1 one, one. that means we are going to go to game number three game number three here we go the big decider and is he sure taking a mulligan here no yeah he is taking a mulligan both players are going to go down to six so i guess this was their second hand for a moment there it looked like Richard was showing his hand to uh to filco here so we see a Mox Pearl in there, a Mana Vault, right in the hand of Richard. Let's first uh, focus on Philco. He's on the play, so I guess it gives him a slight advantage. I don't think it matters that much in these control games. It can matter if you have a very explosive start, of course. And here we see an Underground Sea, Mox Pearl, Mana Vault, pass turn. And look at this, both players starting with just five turns remaining. Now remember, this is a tournament, meaning you only have 50 minutes to play your game. So I guess they're almost out of time. Played two games. This is their third game, but unfortunately only have five more turns. And we see Richard here showing the hand, kind of showing what can I do and what can't I do. Copying the Chaos Orb here. And then he can start flipping. So he's going to flip on the copy artifact, which is a Mox, I believe. It's a hit. Actually going to go for the island instead. Two more turns left. I mean, I think this is going to be a draw, right? I mean, how can both players here win <laughs> with only so many turns left? There's a Divine Offering on the Chaos Orb. A damage taken from the Mana Vault here for Richard. And I mean, Richard's gonna, just going to play his Copy Artifact, right? Copying the Mana Vault here with his Copy Artifact. Passing the turn. Only one turn left. Wow. I, this is going to be a draw. I mean, what can these players do? Philco needs to win it right now, right here. Nope, it's going to be a draw between these two players. And I think when I'm looking at this match... That kind of sums up the power. I mean, these decks, I would have loved to see a full game three, but this is, of course, tournament magic. Remember, there are only 50 minutes to play your entire game. And yeah, both players, you know, having so many control elements in their decks, uh, this is what can definitely happen here. So both players having a draw. So I guess congratulations to you both or not. It just depends. Have a beer and uh, enjoy the day, I would say. And this was round number two of the Often Troll Cup number five. And please join us again next time because then we have more action for you from the Upton Troll Cup. We have Martang versus Nick, both players playing a, con a control deck. 
So uh, we're gonna see two control decks uh, going face to face. A lot of similarities with today's match actually. We have uh, white, blue, robots in control control versus the deck by Nick. So really a control matchup. Now if you don't wanna miss a thing here on TV Talks, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, because when you're a subscriber, you don't miss anything. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for doing that. Please leave a like, a comment, or share this on your socials. All these things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward. And then there is one more thing you can do to support the show, and that is become a patron by by visiting patreon.com slash timmytalks. The cool thing is if you become a patron, you get access to uh, the Timmy Talks Discord server. You can join in on all the online events. And of course, you're supporting me, you're supporting the channel. So it's a great way of showing your appreciation for the content that I make. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.